God, please allow the words that I speak as we're talking about speech to be your words. Um, allow the insight from your Bible to be manifested and to be seen by people who, the people who are watching this video who are seeking it out, God, who are seeking you out, God. Take your reign, take your control over everything that we do, including the words that we speak to other people and to ourselves on the inside. Um, I pray that everyone would be impacted positively, positively by this video. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And that, would, and that it would reach who it needs to reach. Amen. Proverbs 18, verses 21. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Right? So the tongue has the power of life and and death. So for all the people who are like, oh, my words aren't important. I aren't important. I can just say whatever I want, whenever I want, to whoever I want. That's not true. This is not true. That's not that's not what the Bible says, right? Our words are super, super important. In fact, in James, James 1, James 1 verse 26, it says, Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. Right? So if you call yourself a faith-based person, if you call yourself a Christian, if you call yourself a person of God, but you do not control your tongue, it says in the scripture that your religion is worthless. Worthless. Nada, zilch, kaput, right? We can't say that what we speak is not important because it just isn't true. And fortunately or unfortunately, the way we speak to people is often a reflection of the way we speak to ourselves. So if I have good, positive uplifting, encouraging dialogue internally that is going to flow out of me externally and I'm going to project that onto other people. And the same, it's the same in reverse. The people who are putting people down, uh, demeaning people, cussing people out, those are the people who do not love them, who do not speak to themselves in a good way in here, right? So, the internal language and the external language are connected. They are related. So, if you want to speak life into people, right? Life and death is in the power of the tongue, right? So, if you want to speak life into people, start by speaking life into yourself. Start with the internal and then the external will flow out. Start by changing your being and that will change your speaking and your doing. Allow the Holy Spirit, allow Jesus to move, motivate you, take control over your words and your thoughts and your speech and then that is what is going to allow you to speak good words, uh, good messages to people externally but same is in reverse right if we are speaking death if nobody wants to hear you speak if you find yourself being quick to judge quick to put somebody down quick to hurt people with your words it's a great idea to look internally and see what is going on with you internally crazy out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Let me see what verse that is. Luke 6, verse 45. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. An evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Right? So it goes exactly 
It's, I didn't even have that plan. Man, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Jesus is awesome, right? The internal, what is going on in my heart, can be seen by what I say with my mouth. Man, man, man. Man, man, man. So for the people who say, oh, my heart's in the right place, or he's like, oh, their heart's in the right place, look at their words. Look at what they're saying. Look at what people are speaking. And that will allow you. Look what you're saying. What are you speaking? You say, look at yourself, right? And take the, pl the, 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 the plank out of your eye. Oh, yeah, my heart's in the right place. Yeah, I love people. But I put them down all the time. But I cuss them out. But I, I, I... Humiliate and embarrass them, right? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. So if you want to change what you speak, you have to change your heart. And how do you change your heart? By allowing Jesus to change your heart. By allowing the Holy Spirit to change who you are. To change your being. To shift, sanctify, and, and change you. Then you will speak the things that you need to speak. Another lens through which we can look through to determine if our speech is good and just and honorable is whether or not it is constructive and building people up. So Ephesians 4 verse 29 is what I'm turning to right now. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but what, but only, only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Wow. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can you, can you imagine if social media was only full of people who used constructive words to build people up. Can you imagine what your campus, can you imagine what your job, can you imagine what your church would be like if all you heard was things that were constructive for the, for the sake of building people up? It would be crazy. Can you imagine, can you imagine if you spoke to yourself only things that would build you up? How would that change your finances? How would that change your fitness? How would that change your health? How would that change your relationships? Right? Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. But only what is helpful. Only. Any. That should be the state for the mouth of the Christian. Only. Helpful in building talk. Not unwholesome. Right? And it continues on in chapter 5, verse 4. Nor should there be any obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. I'm going to read that again. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. I'll be honest, guys. This is a rebuke for me. Like, I love to joke around. I love to have a good time. And so sometimes I make coarse jokes. Sometimes I use obscene language. Um, and it is something that I have been convicted of and that I am working on, right? Dirty jokes, cursing, that's not for the Christian. That's not what Christians are supposed to be doing, right? Oh, no unwholesome talk. Not any unwholesome talk. Only what is helpful for building others up, guys. 
And just to say this, I'm not perfect. Only Christ is perfect. So I don't want any, any one of you to think that just because I'm talking about these things means that I always perfectly execute them all the time. So I, I, I'm, I'm cutting down that image right now, right? I struggle with these things too, right? But my struggle doesn't mean that this isn't valid. If anything, it just exposes my need and all of our needs for Christ, right? Don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. Only what is helpful. No obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. So imagine if you replaced your cursing with gratitude. Imagine if you placed the coarse joking with words that were uplifting to people. That's, that's why the Bible is so unbelievably good. Because when you take the principles from the Bible and apply it to every aspect of your life, it will change every aspect of your life. Would you want to be around a person that always spoke life into you, never cussed you out, never put you down, unnecessarily, never, never lacked controlling their tongue and had a good internal dialogue so their external dialogue with you was magnificent. We all want that, right? We all want those people in our lives who speak life into us and over us. But are we willing to become the people who are life speakers? Because once we become willing to become life speakers, we will attract more life speakers to us. Once we get our hearts in alignment with Christ and out of the abundance of our heart, our mouths will speak. Our hearts and our mouths and our minds will align with other people whose hearts and mouths and minds align with us in morality and in goodness and in life, right? So if you call yourself a Christian, if you call yourself a religious person, if you call yourself a man or woman of God, but you do not control your tongue, your religion is worthless. Worthless. So cussing, dirty jokes, that's what she said. That's not acceptable for a Christian. And so now that we have the awareness of that through the scripture, we can allow the Holy Spirit to come in us, to work with us, to make adjustments in our hearts, in our minds, and in our lives, in the way that we speak. Speak life into yourself, speak life into other people, and watch every single aspect of your life change. As always, guys, read the word for yourself. Read it for yourself. Read the word for yourself. Listen to videos like this is great, right? Watching sermons, I watch sermons all the time. But there's nothing quite like studying the word from your, for, for yourself so that you can apply it to your life. Awesome. All right, I'm going to pray this out. God, thank you for allowing us the opportunity to experience your word, your living, breathing word that is sharper than any two-edged sword, God. Allow us to control our tongues. God. Give us the capability to speak only that which would be helpful, to remove any unwholesome talk, to control even our joking, Lord, even the things that we claim we are joking about, God, help your spirit to take hold of our tongue and our mind. And God, 
change our hearts so that what would flow out of it naturally would be good, constructive, uplifting, helpful, non-judgmental words that would bring life into other people and would bring life to us so that we may be a blessing to the world and everyone that we interact with. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Awesome, guys. Take careful inventory of your tongue. Shift it in the way that the Lord calls you to shift it. And your spiritual life and your practical life will be changed for the better. I'll see you guys in the next one.